let the record collect juries back in the courtroom. Hope you had a great recess. You know, we're all missing a great day. It's like 80 out there in the sunshine. No, I think it's crap. Okay, evidence for defendant. Yes, Your Honor. Brittany Bishop. You saw me swear the testimony you will now give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes, sir. Okay, have a seat. <clears throat> Ms. Burke. Good afternoon, and thank you for your patience. Um, can you please introduce yourself to the jury? My name is Brittany Bishop. Brittany, do you know who the defendant, Lily Reddick? Yes, I do. How do you know? She's been my childhood best friend since first grade. Yes. Were you close with Lindley in 2017? Yes. Can you describe for this jury a little bit about Lindley's personality? She's quiet, meek, uh, a great mother, wife. Her family was everything. Um, would you say she was a creative person? Very creative. Would you describe Lindley as conflict avoidant? Definitely. Um, easy going? Yeah. In her personal life, would you say Lindley is more of a leader or a follower? In her personal life, more of a follower. Now, being friends with Lindley since, I think you said, first grade, have you ever seen her handle violence? No. Have you ever known her to be violent? No. Do you remember the date of Ben Rennick's death, June 8, 2017. Yes, ma'am. Did you uh, have contact with Lindley on that day? Yes, ma'am. Tell me when you first knew something bad had happened. My mother received a phone call from her coworker that there had gone, had something had gone over the scanner, um, that there was a snake attack in New Florence, Missouri, and the only person she could think of was Ben because she knew that, you know, my best friend's husband bred snakes. And when you say police scanner, are you referring, or when you say scanner, I guess, are you referring to a police scanner some people have in their cars? Yes, yes. Okay, and so you were told there had been a snake attack? Yes. And your mind immediately went to bed, right? Yes. Uh, what did you do? Um, my mom called me to tell me she received that news and said I should get a hold of Lindley, so I called Lindley right away. Describe how Lindley sounded, well, did, when she answered the phone. She was in hysterics. Did she say anything? She said, it's been, it's been. I asked her, what do you want me to do? Where are you? She said she was at home. I said, okay, I'm coming. So what did you do next? I drove from my house to my parents. My dad then drove me from their house in Wellsville to Lindley's property in New Florence. When you got to the Reddick's property, what did you see? Cops everywhere and an ambulance, and Lindley sitting in the back of the ambulance. Was anyone with her? Um, maybe a medical personnel, maybe like an EMT. Did she appear to be in shock? Yes, she was in hysterics. Did you stay with Lindley pretty much that entire night? Yes. And did you remain friends with Lindley after that night? Yes. Uh, did you have close contact with her in the days and weeks after Ben's death? Yes, I stayed with her for about a month. Were you actually living with her? Um, off and on. I spent most of my nights and days with her in Columbia. Tell the jury what she was like. She was a wreck. She act acted as though her whole world fell apart, and it just had. So um, she, she was a wreck. Was she eating and drinking? We were having a hard time getting her to eat and drink. We had to force it on her. Are you aware if she was ever hospitalized? I took her to the hospital um, once after a news article had gone on uh, stating that Ben had been shot. And he, she went into shock and had a panic attack and I had to take her to the emergency room. Were you still friends with Lindley at the time she began dating a man named Brandon Blackwell? Yes. 
Did you ever have the chance to observe Brandon and Lindley when they were interacting with each other? Yes. What was your impression of Brandon Blackwell? I, yes. I'm going to object, Your Honor. It's, it's irrelevant. What is, what's the relevance of what her impression of Brandon was? Your Honor, I think she'll testify that she observed a controlling... Well, what's the relevance of whatever she thought? They, I... Objection be sustained. Okay. Um, now, I want to be clear about something with the jury, Brittany. Did Lindley ever tell you the full story about what had happened the day Ben died? No. She lied to her. Yes. Do you think she did that because if uh, she had told you what would happen, you would have told her she was being stupid? Absolutely. Okay. And she never told you about the affairs, did she? Nope. Have you spoken with anyone from Highway Patrol? Yes. Um, did they, did you tell them that you didn't think Lindley could ever do this? That's correct. I don't have any further questions, Your Honor. Close. As her best friend, did you guys share intimate details of each other's lives? Yes. And you, she was the kind of person you could go to and tell her your most deep, darkest fears and secrets? Yep. And you were the kind of person she could go to and tell you that? I thought so. But you were wrong about her, weren't you? Correct? I, I think so. Okay. Because she lied to you about all the affairs she was engaged in? Yes. Okay. And uh, tell this jury when it was that she told you that she was present when her husband was murdered. She never did. Your Honor, I don't have any other questions. Be direct. No, Your Honor. And this witness be finally excused? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you so much, ma'am. You step down and be finally excused. Call the next witness. April Shaw. Okay, raise your right hand. You saw me swear the testimony you will now be able to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I'll be done. I do. Have a seat. Can you please introduce yourself to the jury? <coughs> I'm April Shaw. And April, what do you do for work? I'm a nurse. Do you specialize in any type of health services? Um, I had been an infusion nurse for about 19 years. Okay. Do you have any uh, specific training or education? Um, yes, specifically in patients with bleeding disorders, hemophilia, von Willebrand's disease, um, different factor deficiencies. And as part of your work, kind of traveling and doing educational programs on bleeding disorders. Yes. Through that work, did you come to meet a man named Lyndall Gallatin? Yes. All right. And through Lyndall, did you come to meet Lindley Reddick? I did. How well would you say uh, you know Lindley Um I know her really well now. Um, you know, I met Lyndall in about 2008, I think, and I met Lindley around the time that she and Ben got married. What kind of contact would you have with Lindley? Um, my daughter and I would go to the spa and have pedicures when she was little, um, and sometimes I would go and have massages there as well. Did you consider her a friend? Yes. So if you met Lindley around the time she and Ben got married, they would have already had their daughter Amelia, right? Yes, Amelia was a baby when I met her. What was Lindley like around Amelia? Um, she was always really doting um, and really good with her kids, and um, even to this day, I know they're the center of her world. <coughs> did you ever have the chance to watch Lindley and Ben interact? Um, I did not. I, I met him briefly, or in passing really one time, when he was at the spa when I came in. All right. Uh, and you said you and your daughter would sometimes go into the spa for treatments, right? Yeah. I would take her for a pedicure when she was little. She liked to be fancy, we called it. Can you describe to the jury kind of the layout of the spa, what it was like? Um, yeah, it was, I don't know, you kind of walk into the front, and there's a, there was a desk there where the receptionist was, I guess, that answered the phone and made appointments. There were some chairs for the pedicures kind of right there behind that. And then there were some tables for manicures to the right. And then there was a hallway with rooms, and those were for the 
massages and other treatments, I assume. How frequently would you say you and your daughter went into the spa? Um, I didn't take her all the time, but I would say we went, I don't know, probably once a quarter together, and then I went about once a month for a massage or manicure or pedicure or whatever for myself. So on those monthly occasions when you were in the spa, uh, how, about how many people would be there? Um, it always seemed kind of bustling to me, like there were people that were busy. It always seemed like the people at the front desk were on the phone or they were shuffling papers around. I don't know exactly what they were doing, but it seemed like things were, you know, busy. There were other people there when I was there that I assumed were patrons. I mean, they were there as well. They looked like they were receiving services? Yes. Now, did you have any contact with Lindley around the time of Ben's death? Um, yes, I think, I think I talked to Lyndall probably more so. Um, I had come over at one point, I think, just to check on her. Um, she was, you know, very distraught, wasn't eating, wasn't drinking well, um, was having a hard time just getting out of bed or doing much of anything. Are you aware of whether Lindley ever had to be hospitalized? Um, I knew that she was taken to the emergency room for IV fluids um, just because she was dehydrated again from not eating and drinking um, and I believe that was once or twice uh, and I know one time she had had um, a bruise from where she had been um, poked for her IV and I looked at that to make sure you know that it was okay. And why did you specifically have to look at the bruise to make sure it was okay? I didn't have to specifically look at it, I just... Um. Now, I want to be clear. At any time did Lindley tell you she had been having affairs while married to Ben? No. At any time did she tell you she had been present at the facility and had to witness her husband being murdered in front of her? No. Did you know the spa wasn't doing well financially? No. It seemed, like I said, it always seemed busy when I was there and like things were going well. Your Honor, I don't have any further questions. Cross, your friend didn't tell you a lot of stuff that she kept hidden from you and others in the world, correct? Uh, well, we weren't really that kind of friend, but no, I didn't know intimate details of her personal life. Okay, so you, you, she's not the kind of friend you would expect her to share with you that she's having affairs? No, not necessarily. Or, or she wouldn't be the type of friend that would share with you that she was present when her husband I, I don't know if she would or not. I, but she didn't, did she? No, I, she did not tell me that. This bruise you saw was because of the IV, correct? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and she, after, after her husband was murdered, she had eating issues. What kind of? Yeah, I, she was I don't, under a lot of stress. Yes, I believe it was stress related. And stress can come from many different things, can it not? Sure. Do you think if you killed your husband, shot him in the back of the head, and you have the police investigating you, you might be under a little bit of stress. Objection. Calls for speculation. Objection be sustained. Are you aware of whether, uh, do, you, do you think incidents in your life can cause, various incidents can, can cause stress on individuals? Yes, I think stress can be caused for it many things. It can be work-related? Sure. Family-related? Yep. Your kids are having a tough time? Yes. And your own personal conduct can cause stress. Sure, for some people. And you don't know why she was under stress, do you? She was under stress because her husband died. Okay. Do you know why her husband died? He was killed. Do you know who killed him? No. No further questions. Regret. No regret, Your Honor. May this witness be finally excused? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you so much, ma'am. You can step down and you're finally excused. Call your next witness. Lyndall Gallatin. Okay, raise your right hand. You solemnly swear the testimony you will now give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so you got it. And a seat right up here. I'm Lyndall Gallatin. I am Lindley Rennick's dad. Uh, I don't know how far to go. 
That's fine. Did you say um, Gallatin? Gallatin. G-A-L-L-A-T-I-N. Okay. Lyndall, what do you do for a living? Right now I'm retired. Uh, I worked as an electrician for quite a few years. Do you have any health conditions? I have hemophilia type A, which is a bleeding disorder. And yes, I did work in construction, and yes, I did pay for the pains later on, but I made a living for my family. Is that bleeding condition a condition that Lily inherited? Yes, ma'am. Well, she's genetically. It is a genetic disorder. Thank you. Um, are you married, Lily? Yes. Is your current wife uh, Lindley's mother? No. Is Lindley's mother living? No. Uh, when did she pass away? I'm not sure the dates. It was... It, I'm not sure. That's all right. If I said the year 2016, would that sound correct? I don't know. It seems like further than that, but I'm not sure. Was losing her mom hard on Lindley? Oh, yes. Very. Have you ever known your daughter to be violent? No. No. Opposite. What do you mean? Submissive. Growing up, uh, did Lindley have any experience with guns? No. Um, have you ever seen her shoot a gun? Yes. Okay, when was that? When she was a young girl, I brought my 22 out because I only had one gun, and I and we lived in the country, and I had her shoot, had a brush pile, her and her sister both. I wanted them at least to feel a gun, and that's the only time I know if she's held a gun, and that was a 22 long rifle. It was not a pistol. And that didn't seem to spark a lifelong interest in guns in her. No, no. Um, what did you think about Ben and Lily's relationship? I thought they had a perfect relationship. So is it safe to say that your daughter didn't tell you when she went out and had affairs with other men? No. On the day of Ben's death, how did you come to realize something was wrong? I was an AMA trustees at, at the church and we was having a leadership board meeting at the church. I got a phone call from Lindley and all I heard her say was dad and she totally lost it. The next thing I know, someone, a woman's voice says, can I have your phone? At that point, it was a woman who introduced herself as, I'm not sure whether it's an ambulance driver or an ambulance person or whether it was an EMT or what it was, but some lady said, Mr. Gallatin, your daughter is hysterical right now. Uh, her husband is not with us anymore. And I told her I'll be there as soon as I can. As soon as I hung up, I got my truck and left. Did you go to Lindley and Ben's home? Yes, ma'am. What did you see when you got there? A lot of people, a lot of, a lot of stuff going on. Uh, I asked Lindley where the great, where's Maddie and Emma? And they said that uh, Sam's got them. And I was like, I'm gonna go get my grandbabies and I'm gonna take them back to Columbia. And I looked at Brittany, cause she was there and I was like, Brittany, you got Lindley? And Brittany said, yes. And I was like, you got her, I'm, take, I'm gonna get my grandbabies. And then I, that's what I did. What did Lindley's mental and emotional state seem to be? <clears throat> she just was gone. I mean, she wasn't there. She was, she, she wouldn't eat. She, she was like, like blank. She was, you could tell she was in shock. I mean, I've never seen shock that bad in my life. In the days and weeks following Ben's death, did Lindley and your grandchildren move in with you in Columbia? That night. That night. Describe Lindley's physical state in the days after Ben's death. She mainly sat out front in the, in, in, cause out, out in the front porch I had some chairs and she spent a lot of hours out on that front porch smoking, she didn't drink water enough. She didn't, she didn't, she wasn't eating. She was a mess. What was her emotional state following Ben's death? 
emotional like. Did she seem upset? Yeah, she was definitely upset, but it was like, it was, I don't know how to explain it. I mean, I don't have words. She was, she was in shock the whole time, apparently. I mean, that's the only way I can explain it. I don't know any other words. Now, flash, I want to flash forward about two years. Lindley's now dating a man named Brandon Blackwell. Did you ever have the occasion to call the police on Brandon Blackwell? Your Honor, I'm going to object. We've been through this. It is a roll. Jesse's over with Did you ever have the occasion to call the police on Brandon Blackwell? Yes, ma'am. Why was that? Because he would not let my daughter and my grandkids out of their house. He had them pinned. I was on the phone with my grandson. And he said, Papa, Brandon won't let us, let Mama leave. Do I need to continue? Yes, please. So I was like, I'm gonna call the Sheriff's Department. And he said, oh, it's okay, he's letting us leave now. And now, and then, then the next thing he says, well, now he's not. And about the third time he said, he's not. I was like, I'm calling the police department right now. And uh, then I heard Maddie say, oh, no, we're, we're outside now. We're coming to your house, Papa. Did Lindley and the kids eventually make it to your house? Yes, and we did call the Sheriff's Department, and they did come and make, make a report. All right, so they came and took statements from Lindley? Yes. Were there any other, well, let me ask you this. Was Brandon prosecuted for that incident? Or you know, me, I'm. Let me be specific. Are you aware of whether charges were filed after that? Charges were filed. Are you aware of what happened to those charges? No. Okay. Did Brandon ever appear to be afraid of Lindley? No. Were there any other incidents with Brandon after that? It would be hearsay, yes. I, I, there's many, many times my daughter would come over to, and, to spend a night or spend a couple of nights with us. So you don't want to repeat exactly what happened, but no. suffice it to say you saw Lindley upset because of Brandon numerous times. Numerous times. Upset I, to the point, I think you said, where she would have to leave the house and come stay with you. Yeah, and this didn't happen over like a week or a couple of weeks time. This, handed, this happened over an extended period of time. Was on any of these occasions when Lindley came over to your house to get away from Brandon Blackwell, did she ever tell you she was acting on advice of Brandon's mother? Your Honor, no. Wait, 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 there's an objection. Just hang on. Oh, I'm sorry. What's your objection? It, it's it's irrelevant. It's hearsay. It's self-serving hearsay, Judge. Objection be sustained. Did you personally feel threatened by Brandon's behavior? I'm going to object. It's Judge. What's the relevance? I'll withdraw the question. Withdraw. In January of 2020, was Lindley arrested for the murder of Ben? Yes. And I want to be clear. Did Lindley ever tell you she was having affairs? No. Did she ever tell you she had been present and had to watch her husband be gunned down in front of her? No. As her father, do you believe she could have done this? Your Honor, no. I'm going to, well, I'm okay, sorry. just just a minute. What's your objection? I object. That invades the province of the jury. Your Honor, the state has spent the entire trial basically just bashing Lily Rennick's credibility, and as a person in general, I think her father is the person that knows her best. He can speak to that. He can ask. You can ask about her character if you want, but you're asking for the ultimate conclusion this jury, this jury is entitled to make. The reason we've been talking ill about Lily is what because the evidence says she's a. Does what does he believe as to the homicide? I asked if he believes she would have been capable of doing this. Well, okay. Objection sustained. Linda, let me ask it this way. You've obviously known your daughter her entire life. 
you have a handle on when her emotions are genuine? Is that a yes? Yes, and on my entire life, when children are going through teen years. Okay, I see. I, let me get very specific. I understand you take the oath very seriously. I Did do. Lily ever lie to you to sneak out of curfew or lie about where she'd been when she was a teenager? No, not to my knowledge. Okay, but are you saying sometimes she might have been less than genuine with her emotions as a teenager? Is that yes. what you're saying? Do you have any doubt that her shock after Ben's death was real? Absolutely not. No further questions. Okay, Cross. Sir, I'm, I'm sorry you're in this mess, but I, I need to ask you a couple questions, and I'm sorry about that. I know she's your daughter, and I, you love her very much, don't you? Yes. And I'm sorry to put you in this position. But let me ask you this, Ben, he's a pretty good guy, wasn't he? Yes. You don't have anything bad to say about him. No. And you thought the two of them had a perfect marriage. Yes. And, and I'm not trying to give you a hard time, but you've been sitting through this whole trial over there, haven't you? Yes. And uh, did you sit through all the proceedings up in Mexico a couple weeks ago? Were you there for those? No. Okay. So you, you've been sitting here this whole time, correct? Mm -hmm. And, and you realize that what you thought was a perfect marriage might not have been. Correct. So there are things you about your daughter and her life and what she was doing that you're not aware of. Right. Not only that you're not aware of, but it turns out you were wrong about it. I didn't know I was wrong. Well, your, your, your belief in what you told this jury was you thought they had a perfect marriage. Right. That belief is wrong now that you've heard some more, correct? Apparently. Uh, what you also thought was your daughter was honest with you about everything, but she kept things from you. So yes. She, she didn't tell you about affairs. Correct. She never told you about being present when her husband was shot in the back of the head, did she? No. And if she did, you would have gone to the police with that, wouldn't you? Yes, because her story is she didn't do it, and this other guy did, right? You mean right now? Well, I mean, again, you were Objection. Here. The defendant has to testify to this case. That's going to comment on evidence that's not in yet. I'll withdraw, Judge. The question's been withdrawn. Ask a question. Kim. But there are things your, your daughter has not told you that are significant events in her life. Yes. But there are things she keeps from you. Apparently. Yes. Apparently. Now, let me ask you this. Uh, at 6.30 is when your daughter began acting hysterical, apparently. When she, I mean, you didn't find out until a little bit later. But if she began acting hysterical when the emergency personnel arrived. To the best of my knowledge, the, the, uh, the first time I heard about it was when I got a phone call. But it was earlier in the day when this murder happened, correct? Uh, from what I'm hearing. Okay. So what I'm getting at is... Was she just acting at 6.30? Objection, lack of personal knowledge. Well, Judge, she brought it up whether about genuine emotions. She brought this up, Judge. I was know. asking about emotions he witnessed personally in the days after Ben's death. Well, and I'm asking about were those emotions genuine or were they acting considering this murder happened earlier in the day? He was asking, the question I think, if, if we read the transcript, was why was she not acting hysterical if the murder happened earlier, or what was she doing in the meantime? Objection, objection, be overruled. Do you need me to repeat that, sir? Yes. Okay. Again, if it's 6.30 at night, mm -hmm. we're to believe she walks in, sees her husband dead for the first time, calls out, and is hysterical. That's what we're to believe, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, but, but apparently, it, it sounds like this murder may have happened earlier in the day. From what I'm hearing. Okay. And she has time to call the school and deal with the kids. She has time to call, talk to the babysitter, text with one of her lovers, and text with Michael, Michael Humphrey about getting massage. She has time to do all of that on the phone while she's driving back, apparently, to find her husband dead on the floor, correct? Yes. And so what I'm asking you is, if this murder happened earlier, and she's acting hysterical at 6.30, is that hysterics? Is that all an acting job? Objection. Again, he's asking, 
this time for speculation. Judge, again, they brought this up. They asked if her emotions were genuine, and they were talking about this exact time. If, if all he has to, he just has to answer. Maybe, maybe he's saying the same thing. Well, you know, let's, let's, do the, let's do this. How about the question is, how would you characterize those manifestations or, or, or something like that? Not whether or not he thinks it was acting, but how, what is his view of her behavior? How about that? That's fine. Okay. Is that okay? Yes. Sounds like you were, is that more comports with the record? That is, yes. All right. Ask that question. So the objection is sustained. Ask the question. Do, 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 do you believe, let me ask it this way to make sure. Do you believe her emotions were genuine with respect to finding her husband's dead body for the first time? I noticed my daughter having periods of up and down, high mo low moments, high moments, totally losing it and getting composed again. At the time she talked to me on the phone, she was hysterical. Now, what happened on her up and downs, I don't know. And sir, I'm not asking you if she was hysterical because according to everybody, she was acting hysterical. My question is, was that genuine? Yes. She was not acting? No. And in your opinion, uh, and this is, these emotions are from the same girl, your daughter, who was hit very important in vital information in the past, correct? I'm gonna object to the characterization of very vital and important information. I think it testified earlier in those. He can ask specifics about what she didn't reveal, but I'm going to object to that characterization. Well, I already asked that. I, I guess he can. I well, sustained, ask detailed okay. what she left out. What I'm considering very vital important mm -hmm. is that these affairs, mm -hmm. the nature of, of, because you're mistaken about how good their marriage was, and whether she ever told you that she was present when her husband was murdered. Do you agree those are vital and kind of important factors? I don't know if I would give them each and every one of them the same weight. I'm not asking you to. I'm just saying that in, they their, are own little, in their own little way, they're important things. Yes, they're important yeah. things. And again, my question then was, the, the woman, the girl, mm -hmm. your daughter, mm -hmm. that you believe was being genuine, Mm -hmm. was the same woman, girl, your daughter, who hid this important information from you in the past. Yes. All right, you got any other questions? Oh, I'm sorry, Judge, I thought you, uh, you no. All right, any regret? No regret. Okay, we did this for you, All right, call your next question. Uh, actually, if I, I apologize, Your Honor, I do, I do have a couple of brief regrets. All right, get back up there. You're still on your own. Sorry to make it climb up and down. Ask your question. Further redirecting. Lyndall, uh, the prosecutor just asked you to comment on some of the evidence you've seen here today because you've been watching the whole trial, right? Mm -hmm. And you've been at every court proceeding. Mm -hmm. Now, earlier today, uh, did you, were you present when, uh, or I guess it would have been yesterday, when Ashley Shaw testified? Yes. And do you remember her saying that uh, when they got back to the spa, Lindley seemed to be in shock? Your Honor, I'm going to object. It calls for hearsay. It's improper impeachment, and it's been asked and answered prior. Okay, so you're asking him to talk about what the defendant said? I'm asking him if he remembers Ashley Shaw <clears throat> testifying that when she got back to the spa earlier that day, Lindley was in shock. Mr. Zellner's asked him to comment on testimony that he's heard and has referenced it. If that's not hearsay okay, Objections or... overruled. So what now? Do you remember Ashley Shaw saying that earlier on June 8th, when Lindley and Michael first got back to the spa, Lindley seemed to be in shock? Yes. No further questions. Okay. You got any great problems here? Now, I didn't mean to be mean to you. You can step down. I want to make you get back up. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, call your next witness. Uh, 
Sheriff Brian Forte. I'm gonna let you go. It's early. It's only 3:40, um, but we we're gonna take care of some business outside of your hearing, and uh, I think it'll it'll benefit the whole thing. I, I also think, and I don't hold me to this, but I think we'll get done sometime tomorrow. Okay, but I don't think you're gonna go back home until probably Thursday, when it's daylight. Okay, but don't, now that's not a guarantee. That's just an estimate. So don't hold me to that, but I think that's where we're headed. And with that, uh, well, let me, you know what, let's just do the Court again reminds you what you were told at the first recess of the court. Until you retire to consider your verdict, you must not discuss this case among yourselves or with others or permit anybody to discuss it in your hearing. You should not form or express any opinion about the case until it's finally given to you to decide. Do not research this case on the internet or by any other means. Don't read, view, or listen to any newspaper, radio, or TV report of the trial. And we're going to make sure that lobby TV's off. And with that, have a good evening. I'll see you tomorrow at 8.30. We'll try to get started, okay? Thank you. All right, please. Okay, counsel is staying here. on the record still mm -hmm. you know I'm gonna let you guys make this call and, and I think whoever is asking is in here uh, is it possible today after the hearing or in the morning to give the media access to exhibits um, Okay, I don't think you need that's uh, there. That's up to you all. I mean, I you know, I don't think I can order you to do anything with your exhibits. So that's up to you guys. But anyway, we're still in process here and on the record. Now, do you all want to take a quick break or you want to keep going and then let these witnesses go? I'll let you decide. We can just keep calling people on this offer of proof. I'll let you. All right, we'll take about five minutes in. 